Red, what are you doing? Why are you here? I'm here to scrub your game. Well, that's not very nice. What did I ever do to you? Nothing. I'm just evil. <laughs> no, no you're not. You're as evil as a typical Captain Planet villain. You're getting all sucked, you dumb transvestite. Don't suck on your tail, demon baby. Oh, you are gonna get in so much trouble. Oh, uh, who will believe you? Your internet viewers? Go meet some of person, you pale pussy. Gah! I'll be right back to give you my analysis on the final chapter and epilogue as soon as I'm done with insulting McGee over here. That's a comeback. Boom. That does it. What's my hand, Zapper? Oh, dear God. That was my first thought on um, realizing I would have to fight Red, the creature that tormented me through nearly the whole game. How would I be able to fight something that can kill with one touch? It seemed totally impossible. Thankfully, Red was no longer able to deliver one-hit kills, but despite that, this was still the most difficult battle I've ever faced, in this game or otherwise. If I had any real comprehension of what I was getting into before I started the fight, I would never have done it. I very soon learned what a horrible mistake I had made. Red reached out and clawed at Godzilla, and when those claws cut through him, I felt it. I know that it's common for people to cringe up when their video game character gets hit or loses a life, but this was not that. This was genuine physical pain. When the pain struck me, I paused the game. I hadn't suffered any actual injuries, but it felt just like my shoulder had been clawed through. I had seen and experienced many unpleasant things at this point, but the game causing me real pain was where I drew the line. Yes, I would be disappointed that I wouldn't get to see the ending, but the risk was no longer worth it. I was about to get up to take one last screenshot and turn off the NES, when I realized something else. I couldn't get up. I was paralyzed to my seat. The only muscles I could move were my fingers and thumbs. As the terror set in, a new message appeared on the screen. I started to scream, but only a weak choking sound was coming out. I desperately tried to get my body to move, but it did nothing. I was looking in every direction, and then I looked over at the computer. Somehow, the computer was taking screenshots of the game on its own when I began the fight. I still don't know how or why. Something in the game must have been causing it. Since Fred could hear what I was saying, I tried begging for him to let me go. From here, things started to get hazy as I was under extreme stress at the time. But from what I can remember, I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I insulted you. I didn't mean it. I didn't know things would get this serious. Please just let me go. If you let me go, I promise I'll never tell anyone or turn the game on ever again. Please. And Red replied, Only one will survive. The statement could not be any more clear. If I couldn't kill Red, then he would kill me. Like an idiot, I had played around with something I didn't understand, and now it might cost me my life. I stopped struggling to move and accepted the reality of the situation. There was only one way to get out of this alive. I had to kill Red. It all went by so fast. If it weren't for the screenshots, I might not have remembered any of this. Just like in the chase levels, Red moved at a horrifyingly fast speed. There was barely enough time to process a thought, and thus, there was no time to form strategy. I had to rely solely on my wits and reflexes. To make things worse, there was no way to predict what kind of attacks Red might use, so I consistently had to be on the offense and defense. I felt every hit that Godzilla took. They all hurt. I tried so hard to avoid the damage, but every attack that I dodged left me vulnerable to another, and the pain would only get worse. After he jumped over me, Red Eyes started to glow. I moved as far back as I could and ducked, but there was no dodging this one. When this hit me, I really did scream. I screamed so loud that someone else in the apartment should have heard me, but they didn't. Just looking at the image hurts me, making me remember the incinerating burn. I paused the game because it hurt so bad, but Red unpaused the game to attack me again, which made me furious. I immediately counter-attacked with the power beam again and again until the power mirror was totally diminished. I wanted Red to hurt like I did. Just before the timer ran out, Red transitioned into his swimming form. I didn't think the timer would still be affecting a battle like this. I'm thankful for that, because it gave me a few minutes to collect my thoughts and decide what to do next. I chose to fight Red's next two forms with the monsters I had encountered them with, so Angerus was next. It probably wasn't all that smart of an idea, but it's what I did. I jumped up and heat beamed Red in the face, and he moved off screen where I couldn't reach him. Then a wave of large mines started to fall from above. 
I felt this was unfair, so I shouted, If you're going to cheat, then why do you even let me use the controller? And then he came at me, rushing from the top left of the screen downwards. Damn it! Now he wouldn't even be able to see where his next attack was coming from. When I continued to strike from random angles, I consistently moved to swerve around. Another 40 seconds went by, and Angerus was nearly gone, but together, we have first ran into his flying form, so it was Mothra's turn next. Deciding to fight Red with Mothra was a terrible idea. Mothra was instantly overwhelmed by Red, and the life meter was devastated in a mere 15 seconds. And once Mothra's life was down to two bars, Red did something I didn't see coming. He reached out, grabbed Mothra, and ate her! After Mothra was devoured, I felt an agonizing pain, like being crushed to death. Mothra had been killed for my stupidity, and I would share the pain. It was a short transition from the battle to the board, but it felt like an hour. The pain, combined with being unable to move, was driving me insane. I wanted so badly for this to end. I never wanted anything so much, but I still had hope. There was only one monster left that could be brought to full health by engaging Red and Battle. Solomon. If any of them had a chance to save my life now, it would be him. Solomon apparently had some history with Red, as when the fight started, this dialogue happened. Red took me by surprise again by immediately burying me with his demonic fire a second time. As much as it hurt, it actually worked to my advantage. Since Solomon started at full life, he still had some to spare. But now Red had used up all his energy and could not use his ultimate weapon any longer. Now he would die. As he drew closer to the end of his life bar, Red turned his whole body to face the screen and flew upwards, then slamming back down in an attempt to crush Solomon. When that failed to work, he tried to devour Solomon like he had Mothra, but he wouldn't be eating my monster this time. I thought I won, but something was wrong. Red wasn't sinking to the bottom, and I still couldn't move. Red was still alive. After his seeming defeat by Solomon, Red had reconstructed his body into his gigantic final form, transporting us to a blazing inferno in the process. It was reminiscent of our first encounter, except now the scenery, much like the true power of Red, had become very real. The music had erupted into a loud blaring sound, a furious drum of death. Faced against Red's insane amount of health, my own demise was an imminent. Solomon was my strongest monster, but not even he stole a chance. It was like trying to fight a mountain. Within seconds, Solomon was overpowered and dropped to the floor, when Red crushed him to death underneath his foot. The sadistic demon took his time as he snapped Solomon's vertebrae and ribs like dry, brittle tricks. I could tell he was enjoying our pain. This is hopeless. I'm a dead man. I had no choice but to send another monster to his death. We were all going to die. I only hoped that they would forgive me. After decreasing Red's health by a minuscule amount, Angerus was also obliterated. Red unleashed a hail of blazing hot needles into his face until he collapsed. Another moment of unspeakable agony, then nothingness as my ally faded away. I asked Red how he knew my name, and then he said it. For years, she was being tormented by something nobody understood. Now I knew what it was. Now I understood why I was mocked about Melissa's death, and how the game knew about it. Because he knew about it. Because he was the one responsible. And this time, he was going to kill me. I was taken back to the board to send Godzilla to his final stand. Barely anything was left on the board. Just Godzilla and Red's icons. And the fifth monster. In the midst of everything that was happening, I had completely forgotten about it. I tried yet again to select it. I cursed. I begged. I screamed at it to do something, anything to help me. To no avail. There was only one thing to do. I knew Godzilla didn't stay any more of a chance than the rest did. But maybe, maybe now that all the other monsters were gone, the fifth monster of life finally awakened. I managed to get the creature's icon selected, and I pressed the A button as fast as I could. The icon started to shake, as if it were trying desperately to move. It was then that Red decided he was done playing fair, and before I could activate the monster, he went for the killing blow, paralyzing my heart. My hands started to become numb and unfeeling, but even as my vision was fading away, I still tried to press the A button. Red surely was breaking one of his rules, but he must have thought that if he could kill me quickly, then it would be too late for any consequences to matter. He would have won. 
he was wrong. Wet's power was being challenged by another force. It prevented him from killing me, and when I regained my vision, I saw a familiar sight. Who are you? What? How is that possible? Red told me they killed you. But how will I be able to stop him now? Her words stirred something inside of me. I wasn't gonna die like this, and I had more to fight than just for my own life. I had to fight to save Melissa, and the world she inhabits. With her help, the fifth monster was finally unleashed. It was time to end this, once and for all. Together, we would take this damned hell spawn out of existence. Acherus was by far the strongest playable monster in the game. He had to be, if we were to have any chance of surviving. His punch involved turning his hands into blades, which caused tremendous damage. But Red had more than enough life to spare. In the end, this would come down to pure skill. With one final strike, Red was destroyed. His body disintegrated and sank below, accompanied by a soar of triumphant music. Slowly, the paralysis wore off, and I was able to stand up again. We had done it. Melissa's death had been avenged, and I felt overwhelming happiness. Until I remembered all the death and pain that led up to this point. All the other monsters who had fought and died. I was about to mourn them, but the game had yet to conclude. Tears of joy streamed down my face, and I broke out crying. I cried harder than I ever have in several years, maybe my whole life. All I had been through, all I had discovered, and now the game was coming to an end. But before she and the others left, Melissa had something to tell me. I am Zachary, and at the time I write this, it has been three weeks since the fateful night where I played the NES Godzilla game. Going back to that night, immediately after I turned off the NES. Once I was able to start walking around again, the first thing I did was unplug the NES, take out the cartridge, and put them in separate sock drawers. I looked over at the computer. All the screenshots you have seen in the story were saved. I backed up all the images on a flash drive before I turned the computer off, just in case. After that, I hit the bed and instantly passed out. It was not a restful sleep, but one of complete exhaustion. It felt like no time has passed before I woke again. But what a day that was. The first thought I recall coming to mind was, what the hell happened last night? I thought about it for a short while, until it occurred to me to contact the person I got the game from to begin with, Billy. So I called him up and told him just to come over to my apartment, which he did, and I showed him the screenshots and gave him a very basic summary of what had happened. At first, he thought I was pulling a joke at him, but he soon realized that was not the case. Once I hit him that this was real, he was speechless. He made it clear that he had absolutely not tampered with the game, and he had no idea about any of this. So then the obvious question was asked to Billy. Where did you get it from? I got the simple answer of, Another friend of mine that I trade games with. He assured me that this was a trustworthy person, and he had never had any issues with games he had got from him before. So then Billy called him, but when we told this guy the story, he was as shocked and surprised as anyone, except he abruptly hung up on us. This clearly was going nowhere. Before Billy left that day, he asked me if I wanted him to take the cartridge and dispose of it. I sharply declined. He asked me how I could possibly still want to keep that thing. I told him that I needed time to think it over. And that was that. Billy and I haven't talked much since. Even though I told him that this isn't the case, I get the impression that Billy thinks what happened with the game is his fault. After he left that day, I did a lot of thinking. It was very hard for me to do anything else, really. I couldn't stop thinking about the game. There were so many questions left unanswered. What was Red? Was Melissa really in the game? How did she get there? Why did this all happen with this game? But the one question that kept me up for many nights was, Red said he had known me for a long time. How? Ever since then, I can't shake this feeling of being watched. The game made me ask myself questions about death and reality in ways that I never wanted to think about. I'm not too sure of anything anymore. Consistently thinking about it soon began to have a negative impact on my life. I just didn't care about anything else at this point. By comparison, all the other day-to-day -day activities seemed utterly pointless. I eventually decided that I had to choose between one of two things. Try to play the game again, or destroy it. 
I tried several times to convince myself to try the former, but I never got farther than plugging the NES back up. Just touching the cartridge made me remember all the pain I felt during the fight with Red. I wonder perhaps if playing the game against myself might cause something terrible to happen. I didn't know anything about how this game worked. It was too risky, and I wasn't sure I could stand that around the game anyway. So then it was time for the other option. Wanting to get some fresh air, I took the game with me and drove to the lake, planning to throw it in. I got up to the lake with the cartridge in my hands and looked down on it, and I thought Melissa. If what I had experienced in the game was indeed genuine, doing what I did may have been the only way to save her from endless torture. In a way, this warped game might have saved her soul. Damn it. Once that thought came into my head, I knew then I wouldn't be able to destroy it. So I just sat down on a bench, gazing at the lake for about an hour. Ultimately, I decided on a third option, selling the game on eBay. It may be selfish, but I promise you that it has nothing to do with money. I don't care how much or little I get paid for this game, believe me. It's selfish because I don't want the responsibility of owning this cartridge anymore. I cannot dwell on this forever, and the only way I can deal with this is by putting the game out of my life. So this brings me to the main reasons I created a summary of these events. First is to record the details while I can remember them. And second is that whoever bids on this game knows what they're getting into. I cannot guarantee the safety of anyone else who plays this game or that anything will happen at all. But to the new owner of the game, remember this, be careful. And if you feel as if the game is literally messing with your mind, shut the damn thing off. Alright, I had to unplug the TV for now since Red One stopped bugging with random insults, but something tells me that it won't last for long. Anyway, what a pyrogromantic battle, am I right? All the tensity with Red and the protagonist fighting for his life, Melissa coming into the game and helping out at the last possible moment, barely saving both of them from a horrible fate? Pretty intense. There are a few things that get me though, like how was Red able to torture Melissa? Did she also play this game too or something, or did she have mental demons that somehow made its way into this game cartridge after her death? And how was she able to stop Red from killing Zachary? And when she claims that they'll be together again, is she referring to after Zachary later on in his life passes away and ascends to heaven? I would say that this pasta has a good argument for a sequel, but apparently the sequel has little to do with this pasta since it's being played by someone else and they have a different experience with the game. But that's not creepy pasta for another day. Well, thank you guys for enjoying my read, and I apologize about all the delays, but my videos will be getting back to a strict schedule, given that Christmas is coming around. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed the pasta, and I hope you guys have a very good night. Miss me much? Uh, no, not really. Well, no matter. I'll summon you to a foul showdown with me in the game, and I'll make sure to paralyze you so you can't escape. <laughs> Try to get out now, you cock puss. What the? How are you doing that? Red, it doesn't work like that. I'm not even convinced that Zack got paralyzed from playing the game. I think it was just my own mare. Oh, yeah, well, uh, I'll suck the lights on off. Ooh, scary. Yeah, I'm gonna leave now. Ah, you suck my balls. Oh, yeah? Oh, son of a bitch. If I had an actual physical body, this would really hurt. Great. Now I'm getting you on TV. Well, until next time, guys, I hope you guys have a great night. Yes.